So dear friends, we are at the happiest moment of our season of the year, a time of the year, what we call the Easter season or the Easter Sunday. Perhaps there is no other event in the Christian scriptures, the traditions to mark the remarkable joy and the impossible that is made possible by Jesus' resurrection from the dead. Therefore, it's a mind-blowing event of the scriptures and the history of the Catholic Church that Jesus who died rose again. Perhaps it looks unbelievable and surely it's unbelievable that a man could get up from his own grave and start walking again. So what is history, or rather, what do the scriptures say about the resurrection of Jesus? You know, the Easter Sunday, as I said, is a beautiful Sunday for us Christians. And the whole, our whole faith, our religion is based on this event of the resurrection of Jesus. We begin in the evening, as it were, of the Easter Sunday, what we call the Easter Vigil. And the evening liturgy is mostly about darkness and light, the sharp difference between darkness and light, the, uh, the proclamation of the scriptures about how who in the whole history the Messiah was not only expected but his rising from the dead would make such a stir or an importance for all of us. We have also the liturgy of the baptism at the Easter Vigil or the Easter liturgies because the water, which is the source of life that is blessed during the ceremonies, of course, and this water becomes a spring of new life for those who are baptized, those who are part of our religion. I shall take the readings of the day so as to so as to inspire you a little as to what the Easter event means to us. The first reading speaks about the Acts of the Apostles soon after the resurrection of Jesus and Peter giving witness of his own account of his meeting of his being and of being touched by the life of Jesus and therefore the Peter's witness about Jesus of Nazareth. Surely this is after the not only the resurrection but also the Pentecost event, the coming down of the Holy Spirit where Peter who was like a coward becomes fearless and starts preaching about Jesus of Nazareth. He explains his, in short his whole life that Jesus was a man, a good man, who did a lot of good, a lot of healings. He preached, he proclaimed, but then Peter says that his own elders, the elders of the community could not stand what Jesus was doing and therefore they start not only finding fault with him, but also persecuting him and suffering and death. But ultimately, what is most important in Peter's witness is that Jesus rose again. He rose again and so forth. Therefore, this event is the most important event in the history of mankind. I go to the Gospel. The Gospel is from the Evangelist John, chapter 20. And I was just counting. Seven times the mention is made about the empty tomb. You know what's the empty tomb? We know what is empty. When it's empty, it's not full. When a glass of, when a glass is empty, it's not. There's no water. There's no milk, or there's nothing in that. And so, empty tomb means the person who was buried in the empty tomb is nowhere. And where is he? He is up and moving, and that's the resurrection. You see the beautiful scene wherein Mary Magdalene, perhaps out of love and affection for Jesus, 
a personal affection for Jesus goes in search of him or rather goes to anoint his body but then she doesn't find him the other gospel mentions that the angel who was there tells her why do you look for someone who is dead who is alive among the dead so therefore which means he's alive he's gone he's resurrected again and so the uh, Mary Magdalene Peter and another apostle all three of them are perhaps a bit disappointed not to find and the story was also that time someone may have robbed his body but then Peter and the other disciples they go inside they see the linen and the last sentence says they did not understand the scriptures of course because scriptures had told of this movement of this change and transformation of Jesus into a risen lord but then they saw it and believed this is very important they saw it and believed resurrection is a fact but for those who do not believe it for those who are not part of this experience of resurrection of Jesus perhaps it means nothing so my dear brothers and sisters Jesus died for us and he rose again for us his suffering and death have a lot of meaning his resurrection uh, in a way sort of storms or other upsets everything that we have known about life about saints <coughs> about the leaders about our own transformation of our own life and therefore Jesus by his resurrection starts a new chapter in our life as i said the disciples words they saw it and they believed let us also believe in the resurrection of jesus that for us this could be a new trend as it were a new beginning for us you know it's beautifully explained also by saint paul in the letter to the colossians and he says if you have been raised from above seek the things that are above do not seek the things that are on the earth or ground level and therefore we who are touched by the resurrection of jesus and believe in it let us live a life that is not touching the ground as such but little above let us rise with jesus to a new life a new beginning and that is resurrection for each one of us easter wishes to all of you you know easter is a feast or the foundational feast of christianity and therefore i take this opportunity to wish all the people christians and non christians those of our own place and those who are outside a very happy feast of easter it's a paschal celebration it comes for us from the jewish roots as it were and therefore by the resurrection of jesus which is a unique event and perhaps in the bible it is explained also that lazarus was woken from his death but he died again but jesus not only rose from the dead but he is living and his spirit is the one that is the is the what moves each one of us and therefore when i wish a happy easter i wish you with all joy with all conviction that belief in the risen lord can surely make a difference in your life i wish very particularly all those people who are at home those perhaps who could not of the christians who could not go for the services those perhaps who are sick they are home bound you know those who are traveling those who are sad those who are desperate perhaps for all these the easter is a new beginning because we believe in christ risen i wish you once again a very happy feast of easter you know we have what's called the easter blessings of the houses of the christians the catholics and it's called the easter blessings it's a beautiful practice it's come from a very ancient times that soon after easter the pastors went round and blessed the houses of the people and that is called easter blessings i would say there is a little foundation in the scripture itself that jesus when he rose again 
what we do what do we hear the first thing he does is goes in search of his disciples his disciples were no longer when jesus died on the cross they ran away perhaps jesus must have felt very desolate isolated alone but then he doesn't keep this in mind when he's re- he's resurrected he goes in search of them they have already moved on to the another world as it were peter and the other apostles say let us go fishing let us go back to our work some others on the road to maus they are going back back from jerusalem there's nothing more for us but jesus goes and meets them in india road place in john chapter 20 jesus goes to that show where he knows peter will have started fishing again fortunately or unfortunately peter doesn't catch any fish and this is the time that jesus catches him once again in chapter 21 of john once again we see that jesus goes in search of thomas and thomas perhaps was very irregular not very disciplined and he was there when the disciples told him and said that jesus came to us and we met him we met him and thomas says i don't believe all these stories unless i see unless i touch and jesus in chapter 21 of john appears once again going in search of thomas and meets him and says thomas come forward see my hands see my feet put your fingers into my side and believe which means jesus goes in search of him at the road to emmaus chapter 24 of luke we see that once again jesus is going on search and so what do i want to say the apostle blessing is in one way jesus going in search of each one of us and he comes to meet us in the person of the priest in our own homes in our own dwellings so therefore easter blessing is a tradition of course but it's not only a holy tradition it's a tradition that perhaps makes us meet jesus once again in the person of our priest who blesses our house this blessing is important this prayer of blessing is important for perhaps all those who are in the house for those who are out of the house those who are sick in the house those who are perhaps worried and another year begins there are a lot of troubles and difficulties this is also for those perhaps that we we are gripped in the evil or evil spirits to drive away all the evil from the house so that the devil doesn't trouble us anymore and there are so many blessings that can be associated with the easter blessings so my dear brothers and sisters as our priests come to your house they are coming to bless your house and your family some people think that uh, perhaps our house needs to be to be blessed and some people they say we keep the key somewhere close by father when you go there they will open the door father has not come to bless the walls the cupboards the furniture of your house he comes to bless the people in the house the family gathered together and therefore this is a very important moment to experience this oneness in christ of which jesus blesses us all and this is easter blessing for each one of us each of the families of course the priests will be visiting it's understood that they cannot finish everything in certain certain periods of the month because there must be many many houses and surely maybe some houses will be left out but if you go and tell the office the parish office to say that my house was left out i was not there i am not there on this day i will be there surely our priest will be very accommodative to do the house blessings so dear my dear brothers and sisters please wait for this easter blessing which is a special blessing for you in your family i now take you to something that comes in this week a special devotion called the devotion to the divine mercy it's a devotion that has come to us recently perhaps 20 25 years and this devotion is a catholic devotion is a catholic devotion to jesus christ associated with a reported apparition of saint faustina kolska and the apparition was the heart of jesus flowing 
with blood and with the sparks of joy sparks of light as it were now as you have seen the icon that's a beautiful icon which has become very popular now and so this devotion is called the devotion to the mercy of Christ divine mercy of Christ as i said is associated with sister faustina who was born in 1905 25th of august and she died on 5th october 1938 which means only 33 years she was alive she is supposed to have given this first apparition of the heart of jesus the mercy of jesus and jesus spoke to her at the age of 19 in 1924 at the age of 19 and ever since she has been the votary of this devotion and she has had almost 14 times these is supposed to appear to her and told her to propagate this devotion especially to stress the divine mercy of jesus the forgiveness of jesus the important compassion of jesus because every time we say that we have to do this penance and god will forgive us we have to do this we have to we have to become good and god will love us but then in this devotion we see that not only god accepts us when we are good also when we are not good and he extends his mercy and his mercies are boundless aboundless and that is what we express and experience in the divine mercy devotion and it's a chaplet as it were and there is this devotion of a novena also which starts on good friday at 3 o'clock when jesus as we know was crucified at that time and so this chaplet constantly praying for mercy of god constantly praying for compassion of the lord on us and so this is repeated on nine days that it was starting from good friday till easter one sunday after easter the first sunday of easter which is called the sunday of the divine mercy the divine compassion of our lord and so this devotion is spread out now in many places and many devotees are faithfully keep up this chaplet of the divine mercy and also the feast of the divine mercy that which comes first sunday after easter i also request you to be part of this devotion because ultimately it speaks about the mercy of god you know we can never pay for our sins we can never make up for our sins however much we try you know in the other religions they have to do penance after penance they have to climb the mountains they have to go to so many holy places in order to be forgiven but in our religion God in his mercy and compassion has made it a little more easier for us that we believe in the mercy of the Lord that we pray for his his forgiveness and that is enough for us and therefore we participate in this devotion very special devotion of the divine mercy in this week that has started already started with the what we call the good friday and every day perhaps even if you have missed one or two days continue on the other days of the week till we arrive at the feast of the divine mercy on sunday after easter there is something special that i would like to make appeal to to you to you you know this is a holiday month our children are back from the exams of course the last exams may be going on and there might be some for some others a few more exams but basically the month of april and may the holiday months we are at home the parents are happy to have their children perhaps they spend more time with them and the children also get occasions to go out with their family to be a little more free they are happy joyous connecting talking seeing perhaps many things we have a group of people in our archdiocese i have spoken quite often about them what we call the children and the youth from manipur at the beginning of this year that's almost in august september we had this appeals coming from manipur itself whether some children could come to bangalore of course they have gone to the other cities also delhi mumbai gauhati perhaps chennai kerala they have gone to many other cities but some preferred to come to bangalore and so the first calls that came whether they could come to bangalore whether we would welcome them we would give them a chance to study in our schools 
and when it all began because they had no opportunities of studying this year at all their schools were burned their books were burned many of their parents were out of their own state as it were living in small uh, places rehabilitated places that were arranged for them and so we said yes welcome in the beginning we expected just a few numbers in fact the first phone call which came he asked us can you take 20 children we said sure and then another 40 were someone asked and suddenly one night there were 100 children 100 children and youth at the railway station and we got a phone call to say that they have just come we had not told us but then how to send away these children who have come at midnight to our state to bangalore to our own communities and therefore the goodness in many of our people the kindness in many of our people about 800 students were taken up in karnataka out of which about 500 in bangalore itself by different schools different hostels made arrangements and all free many of them got new uniforms new books new material for their school and they were happy and they are happy in our many of our boardings hostels many of our religious institutions have taken them happily and they are just sort of affectionately loved by those that have taken them there's a little problem the problem is now is time of holidays of course we also expected them to go back at least a few of them many of them but then we were told that they cannot go back they will be in bangalore even during the Christ- even during the may holidays summer vacations and so they are going to be here i can understand they have also finished exams they are in their boardings they are in their bunker beds and perhaps they can see a little this side that side they can go out to the road where they are that's all they have no real the spirit of the holidays that the others have and it looks sad children are children they like to go out and play they like to go out and have fun the youth perhaps would have like to go around a little and see there are limitations we are not allowing them to go far so as not to get lost and not to perhaps to create situations for them and for us which are embarrassing but then i understand they need holidays they need to relax a little during the holidays and therefore we are trying ways and means to keep them happy just sort of with um, as the saying goes all um, books and all study and no play makes jack a lazy boy and this not only laziness but also a some sort of down spirit that they don't can't enjoy so my request comes in this way we have many many families in bangalore in the city of bangalore i'm not speaking of the suburbs and the substations of ours but in the city of bangalore in each of our parishes the families are settled in their own houses perhaps not very big small ones you have one or two children i am just making a request if it's possible if some children of our manipur who are lodged in our boardings could be taken out for holidays in your families not for many days maybe 8 10 days maybe even less than that and not all the children you can afford to take one child you can afford to take two children perhaps both boys or both girls depending on your own family situation that would be a a welcome break for these children first of all to live with the families at the same time to relax a little they are not asking for anything more anything more than what you have in your family that's enough for them and they are very good children they are very good children in fact we are realizing they are very clever children i won't be surprised that in a few years time we will have rank holders among them in our schools because many of our schools religious schools and high school schools have these what we call the manipur children and not only that the youth are also wonderful they are very much what we call musical they break out into songs they are good in dances they are good in instruments and they are good in sports also football is their f- favorite sport and also the other things are there i am not asking too much of you i just start to keep these children if possible in your families for short time 
if it is possible we give you the number of the two persons who can be connected who can be contacted you can ask the details and take the children whenever it is convenient for you i now come to what's called the jewel of the arch diocese you might wonder what i'm going to speak today from the jewel and this jewel is what we call st anthony shrine in a place called better al suru the name better al suru perhaps some of our priests know sisters know but i can't expect the public to know about it. it's such a small place you don't find in the map of bangalore or karnataka it's just a dot it's almost on the road to kanakapura of route towards what we call harubale or perhaps sangam is much better sangam is known much better so on that road from harubale it's about 28 kilometers nestled in a small village like but beautiful surroundings picturesque and natural surroundings and the shrine of st anthony is gaining more and more popularity among the christians and also the non christians better the alsuru let me just explain a small history of this place it seems about 150 years ago there were no christians it was just a raw and rough village there were a lot of farmers hindus perhaps non christians there and our farmer all of a sudden found a, a little st- statue or small doll it was not a big size maybe about 7 to 8 inches 10 inches maximum a doll a small sort of a, a statue type and so when he found this statue of course it had no both the arms were broken and it was looking like an ordinary doll he gave it to his children and his children started playing here and there but something special about this doll or statue this doll did not want to be considered perhaps not sacred and played about and therefore it placed himself placed itself on the slab the top slab of the house it happened once the children brought it down and started playing again but somehow at night or so again it went and stood there on that slab it happened so many times and then the farmer himself who found this said that this is something special he took this this what we call the statue or the doll as it were to his own temple priest and the temple priest very graciously recognized and said this is not our community or our religion this is a christian statue or christian doll but there are no christians there and it seems there was a a priest a french priest in harubale that side who is to come once a, perhaps once a year or once a month in the to say celebrate mass or so he went and said father this is a statue that we found and we see that is a christian statue we have tried to keep it in our house it doesn't remain maybe you can take it and place it in your church in your this one the priest was understood the the what we call the speciality of this statue statue of st anthony and therefore he is supposed to have created a small hut in order to keep that but then this particular better dal suru was not even a mission station there was no church there it was it came under the parish of harubale and so the harubale people said that why it should go to that mission station which perhaps has not much importance let us bring it to our own church unfortunately small miracles it starts missing again in the harubale church and that's why perhaps the priest himself said this belongs to better dal suru this was found by the hindu farmer in better dal suru and it go to better dal suru and therefore a small church was constructed which still exists there and it's 150 years the devotion of st anthony is spreading by and large many people are coming there are just 20 christian families now but more people are coming from all over bangalore and you will be surprised to hear that many of them are non christians wanting favors and experiencing small miracles in better dal suru so therefore i consider it's a jewel as i said because it's hidden it's far away but then 
This jewel like the statue which was considered doll for the children is become one of the most important pilgrim attracting statues of the devotions of our arch diocese and it's not only that slowly as it developed the priest of our arch diocese 25 years ago the church was built and i am told father william patrick was the first parish priest after that for the balraj for the chinnappa for the nirmal and so many other priests have served there and presently father christopher white is the parish priest and beautifully looking after this mission there is something special that father christopher himself experienced and expresses a small miracle somewhere in 2020 perhaps just at the time when the when the covid was just starting and christopher noticed in his what we call cctv which he checks every day if anyone has come gone and suddenly one night he sees that there is a figure that is moving towards the altar and the figure in dark in darkness looks like saint anthony you know when he made known to the people there were flocks of people there were crowds of people who came there and said saint anthony himself is visiting our shrine is so beautiful and there are so many other small miracles that are taking place there people who have lost their jobs people have no children have prayed and got children people who have sickness have experienced cure and healing and so many other minor miracles and so the devotion to saint anthony takes place of course now it's a full fledged parish but on every tuesday there are masses and people come and experience the joy the food is also given for all the people the feast of st anthony at betadalsuru takes place on tuesday after easter this month april month of april it's going to be second of april the what we call tuesday and father christopher white welcomes all the pilgrims all the people for this feast perhaps someone may ask why tuesday and uh, soon after the holy week they could have kept in the month of june or somewhere else for that also there is an explanation you know olden days harubale was an important mission station and a station that gathered all the people especially during the lenten season and they had what's called the lenten passion play on easter on good friday easter etc on those days they had it and so the people who came there were not able to go back most of this these what we call the the place or the passion place took place at night and almost the whole night and the people could not go back and so it seems the people found another way to another place to go after this what we call the easter celebration at harubale to go to to go walking to better dalsuru in those days you can't expo- could not expect any transport as such so they went walking and by the time it reached it was tuesday for them past monday the whole day they walked and tuesday was the feast at better dalsuru st anthony's feast so my dear brothers and sisters don't miss this occasion we in the city perhaps we have many things to see here we have the zoo we have the gardens we have perhaps even the churches but then a small place like better dalsuru will surely enchant you bring you graces and blessings of saint anthony very special because i consider it a special jewel of our archdiocese i once again wish you a very happy feast of easter the shepherd's voice which is being presented by our beloved archbishop most reverend dr peter machado the archbishop of bangalore who takes so much of interest and concern in order to bring the various topics the contextual aspects in order to inform educate and catechize all of us the priests the religious and faithful of this vast archdiocese and i'm sure you are enjoying this uh, program shepherd's voice and i request each one of you to share with your other colleagues friends and family and relatives near and dear ones so that 
everyone in this archdiocese can be more closer to listen to the archbishop on this shepherd's voice the weekly feature my dear friends as i have always told that this is a wonderful platform wherein we can connect to the shepherd of this archdiocese wherein he brings in the interesting topics in order to increase our devotion and love towards god and also to know the spiritual matters that concerns our faith in a very special way you are most welcome to raise to ask your questions queries and you can send them to us at archdblr@gmail.com and you will also see our mobile number in and through which you can connect with our media center ave studios and the archdiocesan communication center please do write to us your feedback your opinions thank you continue to watch and continue to share with others